Hi everyone, I'm back again with another exciting vlog. I'm, a, I'm back a lot sooner than I thought I would be, which is great, because, you know, when I did the when I did last week's vlog, I was like, I can't stop here. I make so many top 5, top 10 lists at the end of the year, and you know, I'm thinking, maybe I should, you know, add some, add something a little different. But you know, last year I did top 5 video games, top 10 albums, and then... I thought about doing top five video games again, but then I was like, there, I have not played five video games that are worth talking about. <laughs> With that being said, for this list, I'm going to be talking about my top five movies of 2019. I gotta say, 2019 has been fucking stellar with films. There have been a lot of good sequels, a lot of good franchise saga continuations, and some pretty good original films. I'm not gonna lie. There have been a lot of good original films this year, and there's... It was way too hard to count down to just five, because how can you narrow down five films with so many good ones this year? But somehow I was able to do it, so let's get down to it. Number five, Terminator Dark Fate. Now I know what you're thinking. Seriously, this fucking movie? Yes, seriously, this fucking movie. Because this was everything I had wanted from a real third film from, Cam from James Cameron. There were some aspects of this film that felt like they were, they were like too heavily on the second film, but that's the thing when you've done three three films after the second film that it just kind of felt rubbish. Because the thing with this one is that yes, it does feel like a true sequel to Terminator 2. And I promise you, nobody paid me to say this. <laughs> but yes, this this is definitely the true sequel to, to Judgment Day. I do feel like this is the film that Cameron should have done from the start had the studio who made the second film not gone bankrupt and the rights to the film been sold, which is the real reason why Cameron didn't work with the last couple of films. But that's okay. You know, it's it was nice to see him have creative control in this most recent film. It was really nice to see Linda Hamilton back as Sarah Connor. It's always, always a joy to see Arnold Schwarzenegger as the iconic T-800 Terminator. Let's, let's be honest. Even though Sarah Connor is the heart and soul of the franchise, it's Arnold that carries the weight. I just gotta put it that way. <laughs> but yes, it was, it's definitely the, the true sequel to Terminator 2. They, like I said, you know, there were aspects that rely too heavily, a, li a little heavily on the second film, but when you've done three films that Cameron weren't involved in that just didn't feel like a real sequel, what can you do? Now, I think the only reason why this film bombed at the box office was because people just have Terminator fatigue. Like, you would think with the last two films that were just rubbish and that barely made enough at the box office to compensate for marketing and maybe a sequel on board, you would think, man, does this fucking madness ever end? I'm tired of these goddamn films. <laughs> <laughs> I, I understand people's fatigue with this franchise, but it's definitely what I wanted. It's everything that I had dreamt of, of a real sequel to Terminator 2. I was so happy to see Linda Hamilton back on board. When I had first originally heard the concept of a sixth Terminator, I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Why would you make, why is there, why even? <laughs> I just, I couldn't. Because with, after Genesis, I was like, I don't know if I can take another film. But then, you know, as time went on, it was real that Cameron was involved in the project, and I was like, okay. There's some hope after all. Of course, Schwarzenegger was involved. Linda Hamilton coming back was definitely the icing on the cake. Because if you look at it through a broad lens, this has always been Sarah Connor's story. Yes, John Connor's the leader of the resistance. Yes, the T-800 is iconic to have appeared in every film, whether it's CGI, body double, or actual Arnold. But like I said, this has always been Sarah Connor's story. It's always been hers to tell, so it was such a pleasure to see her back in the role. Now, do I think they need to make any more films? Probably not. I know Schwarzenegger's probably not going to be able to make another film, and that's okay, because, you know, he, he's done plenty for the franchise. I don't think he needs to keep going, but that's just my opinion. So yeah, bottom of the list, bottom of this very narrow list, Terminator Dark Fate. Number four, Us. Ooh, we. I used to not be huge on horror growing up, but as I've gotten older, I've gotten more accustomed to it, and hearing about Jordan Peele and his film Get Out, I was blown away. I was a little late to the party, but I was still nonetheless blown away. My skin was crawling. The list can go on. It's really, it's really nice to see someone with a comedy background in acting break out of that shell and make iconic horror films like Get Out and Us. You know, Us was no different 
from Get Out as far as the horror factor. Like, the thing about Jordan Peele's craft is that it's not the traditional horror that you would think of. He brings a new light to horror, and that's my favorite thing about Jordan Peele, is that he doesn't, he doesn't stick to the tradition. He brought something new to the playground, and I absolutely love that. I love when directors, screenwriters, I love when artists take a leap of faith or risk, either or, with their craft, and it turns out better than the tradition. Well, not necessarily better than the tradition, but good. Still really good in that aspect. And that's the thing with us. It, there, there weren't no predictable jump scares. Everything about this film made me uncomfortable. And I believe that's what he was trying to achieve with this film. He tried to make it as unsettling as possible. And he succeeded. And every single person in the cast did such a stellar job. I couldn't tell if I liked the kids' performances or Lupita's performance or even Winston's. Like, they all did such a good job. Jordan Peele's fucking got it. This, this dude, this dude is modern day horror, and that's the thing I love about him. He takes risks. He branches outside of the norm and takes risks. And that's, abs that's absolutely what I love about it. So yeah, number four, Us. Directed, written, produced by Jordan Peele. Number three, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. I don't normally venture out into biopics as often as I should. The thing with A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood is that not only am I a sucker for Tom Hanks, but this is probably his most iconic role to date. And that says a lot, considering the fact that he played Walt Disney six years ago for Saving Mr. Banks, but that wasn't a Walt Disney biopic. That was just about the creation of Mary Poppins. The thing about this film is that it tells two different stories, at, well it doesn't tell two different stories at once, it tells two different perspectives of one entire story in which eventually they all come together. And it's done so well. The camera work is so fucking great. Like the transitions between the 4x3 and the 16x9 ratios is beautiful. Such solid transitions. And I cannot get enough of that. And Tom Hanks plays the role of Mr. Rogers so well. If you grew up watching Mr. Rogers, you would understand that everything that Tom Hanks is embodying in this film is spot on. I didn't grow up watching it, I just had to watch archival footage. <laughs> this 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 was such a beautiful film. Like, you know, the transitions between the stories, the aspect ratios, the camera work was fucking beautiful. I could not get enough I could not get enough of the camera work. I'm a sucker for good cinematography. I'm a sucker for good writing. I just love the craft in general. And this film was one of those reminders as to why I love filmmaking. And like I said, you know, I don't watch enough biopics in my life. So getting to watch this one, it actually brought tears to my eyes. You know, you think of Mr. Rogers, you think, oh man, this is the guy that made me cry tears of joy growing up. Not me in particular, but you know, the people that grew up watching that show. And Tom Hanks will never not make me fucking cry. Once that intro had started playing, he started doing that iconic routine that Mr. Rogers had always did, there were already tears in my eyes. It was so fucking gorgeous. I was so happy watching this film, I could not get enough of it. A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood definitely deserves my top five. Not just because I'm a sucker for Tom Hanks, but it's such a solid biopic. I'll definitely go watch it again. Moving on, number two, Queen and Slim. When I say that I'm a sucker for the art of cinema, this film embodied it to the maximum. I look at this film and I think, man, the cinematography is fucking gorgeous. The soundtrack kept me on board. And you know, this a lot of people have called this movie a modern day Bonnie and Clyde, the black Bonnie and Clyde. You know, they're, they're very applicable analogies because it's definitely what this film feels like. Except, you know, Bonnie and Clyde were fucking outlaws that robbed people. Queen and Slim were just you know, two innocent people that got caught up in the wrongdoing. So there is a difference there with those analogies, but they're still pretty applicable. Watching Queen and Slim, oh man. Yes, this the story was great, but the, the two things that really kept me on board were the cinematography, the camera work, whatever you want to call it, the soundtrack. Those two things took my breath away the most out of, out of this film. And I'm a sucker for those, especially. Like, the minute I see beautiful camera work, and I hear such a good soundtrack to go along with it, that's it, I'm drawn. I could not be distracted for a single second because of how beautiful this, how beautifully composed this movie was. And not to mention, you know, Daniel Kaluuya has really been building his resume since Get Out. The guy's got it all. And I'm so fucking happy that this, that he can add this film 
to his collection of iconic roles. Because Queen and Slim, such a good movie. So beautifully crafted. I could go on about how beautiful this movie was, but that would take up the entire video, and I'm not going to do that. And this movie was released around the time that a lot of other popular movies were released, like Knives Out, Frozen, Beautiful Day, a lot of movies and you know that were released in that range, in that date range. It's a little disappointing that it's not get, it's not being as popular as other movies because you know, like I said, it's beautifully composed, did good at the box office, which is great. You have to look at it through a much broader lens. When you release movies at the same time as other popular movies, you're asking for competition, pretty much. I mean, sure, you know, marketing teams may not see it that way, or you know, the filmmakers might not see it that way, but nonetheless. I enjoyed this movie. It was worth every second. I would rewatch it as many times as I could. Just so I can indulge in that beautiful camera work and that beautiful soundtrack. So much variety in that soundtrack, it made me wonder, who has this good of taste? Because you need to share that with me. <laughs> yes, Queen of Slim's definitely my number two of this of this list. My number two of this year. Alright. Number one, the grand finale. El Camino, a Breaking Bad movie. It wasn't until recently that I had gotten into Breaking Bad, spring 2018. I had just gotten into that show. And as I watched it, every second had me on edge. Every second of the TV show, you know, kept, kept my attention going. I could not be distracted for a single second watching this television show. And the chemistry between Walt and Jesse definitely drew me to like this show. And the same thing with additional supporting characters like Hank Schrader, Mike Ehrmantraut, Saul Goodman, Gus Fring. I'm over here getting actors and character names mixed up. Don't. But yeah, when I first watched this TV show, it, it was definitely something that reminded me why I love the art of cinema. I watched this show around the same time that I needed that spark of creativity. I needed inspiration. I needed motivation. I needed so much to get back into the craft of filmmaking. Well, this TV show definitely helped me out a lot. And then, so when I heard that for the 10th anniversary that Vince Gilligan had been working on a sequel film to the series, I was freaking the fuck out. How can you follow up something so beautifully done with a film? And I'm just, I'm just shaking the whole time. I was like, how the fuck is this possible? You know, the teaser dropped in August and it was really just a, a clip that was not included in the film. Everything about it, was, was nothing but callbacks to Breaking Bad. And then the film comes out, and I'm blown away. Like, yeah, there were a lot of high expectations. People were expecting a lot of action, a lot of tension, just because that was what Breaking Bad had mostly comprised of. But this is the film that was basically an extended episode of the series that led to the closure of another main character that had eaten at Vince Gilligan for so long. Originally, with the ending of Breaking Bad, it was closure for Walt. The fate of Jesse had been left up in the air, and Vince decided that it was a good idea to just let people decide, you know, what happens to him. But as time went on, he said, uh, -uh I can't fucking leave it like that. I gotta give him a proper ending. And he gave him such beautiful closure. I love it. Now, yeah, there were some callbacks to old characters that could fit in perfectly with the film. And there was a lot of good progression as the film went on to help Jesse lead, lead to that closure. Or to help lead Jesse to that closure. And that was the thing about this film. It was beautiful. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. So yeah, top five films, 2019. There you go. If you like what you saw, please, please don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell for notifications because I do not upload often. So, once you do, you get a notification. Holy shit, he's back! <laughs> so, I really hope you guys enjoyed watching this. I'll see you guys later.